So I think we're probably good to make a start if you are, Lee. So um, welcome to this session at the Bring It On Summit from Marketing Leaders Circle. And this session is called Life's a Pitch. I have to be careful how I word that. And so I'm delighted to welcome Lee Warren to present for us today, the author of the book, The Busy Person's Guide to Great Presenting. So trusted by the world's leading brands, Lee has a reputation for energetic audience engagement, thought-provoking content, and hilarious delivery. No pressure there then, Lee. <laughs> Lee's audience has learned to sell better, network better, and communicate better, and they have fun while they're doing it. So we're going to be looking around today how the world of presenting is changing and fast with what's happened in the last 18 months and the way we're going forward. So with that intro, which puts no pressure on you whatsoever, Lee, um, I'd like to hand over to you um, for the session. Great. Th thank you very much, Ben. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I, I feel, gosh, I feel like I need to jump on a unicycle now and entertain you all in, in a, a hilarious way. Um, we're going to go uh, some speed through some ideas this afternoon, and this is being recorded, so you can always watch this back um, if, if there's anything I go over too, too quickly. Um, but I want to get as much in as possible for you. The title, obviously, is Life is a Pitch. Um, and so we're going to look at presenting and pitching, but particularly in this new environment many of us are in, which is either virtual or for some of us hybrid. And for many of us, including me as a keynote speaker, sometimes you don't even know uh, what it's going to be in a month's time. You know, you might be uh, asked to present in one format. And then by the time you get to the date uh, that you'll be presenting or pitching in a totally different format. So I want to give you as many ideas that will be useful for you for those formats as possible. Um, as Ben mentioned, I'm, I'm the author of a book. I'm very proud of my book. Here it is. It's uh, The Busy Person's Guide to Great Presenting. He forgot to mention that it's an award-winning international best-selling book, uh, but I thought I'd drop that in at the beginning of our call. And I've shown that to you uh, for a very good reason. It's that I, I will send uh, a copy of this book to whoever asks the best question in our session today or makes the best comment as we go through. So I'm going to... Um, rattle through some things and then I'll stop after about 10, 15 minutes and check if there are any questions. And then I'll check again after about another 10 minutes. So whoever asks the best question or makes the best comment as we go through this afternoon, I'll send you a copy of my book free of charge. Uh, and the rest of you can buy it. It's available in all good bookshops and, and most crap ones. Anyway, so let's let's get into what, what presenting online um, really means. Pitching, presenting, what, what it means to engage people, what it means to really make the best uses of, the, of these mediums, whether we're hybrid, whether we're speaking just through a camera to other people who are watching us just on their laptops and so on. And I think one of the things to, to, to really understand right at the beginning, and really this will inform everything else in this session, is is to understand that when we're in uh, uh, the particularly the virtual environment or when some of our audience are in a virtual environment, so we're in a hybrid situation, you know, and maybe half the audience are in a virtual environment, the thing we're struggling with is that everybody online has, has really the attention span of a three-year-old and the memory of a 90-year-old, right? The attention span of a three-year-old, the memory of a 90-year-old. And really attention is the, is the biggest thing that many of us are struggling with. We have to get people's attention and we have to keep people's attention. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, particularly those of you uh, watching who are experienced at presenting or pitching, in the in the pre-COVID times, in the real world, many of us perhaps used to wing it more than we, we should have done, or we weren't really as prepared as we should have been. And that's sort of fine. If you're only in a room face to face with some people, you can wing it a bit. You get the chance for a bit of small talk. You get the chance to stumble, to go over things, to forget things. When you're in a more virtual style environment or a more hybrid style environment, these environments are much less forgiving of mistakes. You're, you're much more revealed when you're speaking into a camera or when you're speaking to a real room and there are other people watching you through a camera. You really, really need to, to step back and do a few things slightly differently to the real world, I think. So here are the basics of the things I think most of us should be focusing on. Um, the first uh, little section is three words that begin with the letter P. I quite like phrases that are easy to remember. Um, so P, the first one is plan, right? I've got three words beginning with P. The first one is plan. And now you're all adults, you know, you'll, you'll know you need to plan to put together a good pitch, to be to speak well in a hybrid situation, to present well in various situations. But what I mean by planning is being really clear on what you're able to achieve in the specific environment that you're going to be in. So when you're in a real room with, you know, 50 people looking at you and you can read all of the body language, you can see people's expression. There's a certain kind of planning you need to do for that. But when you're in a totally virtual environment, you need to do a very different kind of planning. And when you're in a hybrid kind of environment, you need to be able to prepare for both people who are in the room with you and people who are watching you through some kind of virtual medium, watching you through a camera and so on. 
the best, one of the single best ways of planning I've come across, and I, I sort of invented this and I've done this with loads of clients, and this applies to all sorts of presenting, but particularly online, is to really ask yourself the following question. When you're putting a pitch together or putting a presentation together, ask yourself this question. What do I want my audience to do as a result of my presentation or as a result of my pitch? What do I want them to actually do? Now, I just want to focus on this for a minute. Um, and, and in some ways, I hope this will be a little bit provocative, a little bit thought provoking for you. It might even engender some, some questions because there are some assumptions many of us make when we sort of stand up in front of a room or when we stand up in front of a camera or we sit in front of a camera like, like I'm doing today. Many of us make some assumptions about getting a message across to other human beings. And one of those assumptions, I think, is that presenting and pitching is about giving information to other human beings all right it's about transmitting information i've got information in my head i need to get it across to your head but if you think about it very carefully giving uh, um, a, a presentation like this or, or being in a hybrid environment where maybe you know you're you're in a room somewhere with 10 people and 10 people are dialing in presenting face to face even all these forms of communication they're actually very bad ways of giving other human beings information because people will make judgments based on how you look and how you sound. They'll forget some of what you say. They'll misunderstand some of what you say. They'll get distracted while you're talking. Right? This is quite a terrible way of giving people information. <laughs> if you want to give people information, send them a text message or, or, or make a website or write a brochure. But, and this is where the planning is, becomes really important, these forms of communication, hybrid, virtual, real world, they are brilliant at affecting people with information. They're brilliant at engaging people with information. They're brilliant at getting trust and credibility with information. And when you ask this question, what do I want the audience to do as a result of my presentation? You really start to focus on the active things that you can actually do with your information. So, for example, if um, let's say you, you're involved in something that was like a classic sales pitch, you know, you might think to yourself when you when you are putting your presentation or pitch together, well, I want to give the audience an overview of our company and I want to let them know what our solutions are and so on. Well, sort of so what? You can't really know whether you've achieved that goal. That doesn't help you to deal with the different technologies of virtual and hybrid and so on. And you can't really know whether you've achieved that goal even necessarily. How do you know if, if you've explained your company or your offering, your product, your service enough to people? But if you say, what do I want people to do as a result of this presentation? Well, that's very different because the answer might be something like, I want them to ask questions. Or it might be, I want them to agree to a second meeting. Or I want them to agree to read the follow-up detailed brochure. Well, there this starts to get more interesting because now you've got a really clear goal. You can really see what you want the audience to do. And this then helps you to start adapting for the specific environment that you're in. So, for example, let's say you're in a hybrid environment and you've decided, well, my goal is I need people to read the follow up brochure. Well, that tells you something because you can hand the brochure out in the room but you can't hand it out to the audience who are dialing in. You need to have sent it in advance. You need to get them engaged in other ways throughout the, the session. So I really recommend that you're as clear as possible on the goal because the goal will really reinforce everything you, you want to get across in your message, but also it will help you to embrace the different kinds of technology and not be lazy about how you're going to achieve the goal as you're going through your session because you stay laser focused on it. So planning is the first P, and I'm really happy to take questions about that. I'm aware I'm going at some speed. Um, you can always watch this back and, and switch my voice to 0 0.5 speed if you, if you want to. But make sure that you really know crystal clear, you're crystal clear on what your goal is before really you start doing anything else in terms of preparing for a hybrid or a virtual presentation or pitch. The second word, the second word beginning with P is prepare. Um, and prepare is, is sort of obvious in some ways. Of course, you need to have prepared your pitch. Of course, you need to have prepared your presentation. But in the hybrid and virtual situation, preparation means a lot more than that. First of all, it means really getting to grips with the technology. So if you are presenting via a virtual medium like I'm doing today, speaking into a camera with my, my, my computer in front of me, preparation means knowing where every button is. Really, <laughs> I can tell you from deep experience now, having presented a lot over the last 18 months in this new environment, um, that for every button I have to press, the chances of disaster increases exponentially. Um, and I really, if I don't know exactly what I'm going to press when, I, I, I start to get nervous. I start, my confidence starts to drop. 
Um, but the other thing, of course, is also knowing what's going to happen if things go wrong. What will happen if your microphone cuts out? What will happen if your slides don't work? What will happen if the screen share suddenly fails on you? So preparing uh, for some of the things that aren't going to go well, because technology being the way it is, these sorts of things are going to happen, of course. And the single best way of preparing for a hybrid or a virtual pitch or presentation is to rehearse. Um, now, this is a word that quite often strikes terror and, <laughs> and awkwardness into, into, into people all over the world. Um, and about 70% of my work is as a, a keynote speaker. So I, so I walk onto stages, or I, I used to walk onto stages, at conferences and so on, and speak to audiences. And about 30% is sitting in rooms with people and helping them to get their pitches and their presentations better. And every time when I'm working with people and I say, right, let's rehearse now, there's always awkwardness. There's always shuffling and, and there's lots of excuses. Oh, I, I think let me just do my slides first. Um, and, you know, rehearsing feels awkward. It feels strange, but it really is the very, very best way to make your picture or presentation much, much better. And think about it this way. If you've got an important pitch to deliver or an important presentation to deliver, you've only really got two choices. You either rehearse in advance or you rehearse in front of your audience. Right? They're, they're your only two options. And it should be obvious. You're all adults. You're all intelligent people. Um, rehearsing in front of the audience is not your optimum uh, uh, choice, my friends. And what rehearsal means is it, rehearsal is different to planning and rehearsal is different even to practicing. So rehearsal doesn't mean sort of in your head saying, oh, I think I'll do that. Then I'll show some slides. Then I'll mention this. Then I'll hand out some stuff. Right. That, that's that's practicing at best. Rehearsal literally means going through things in real time and not stopping no matter what disasters occur. This is particularly important also in a hybrid environment where, for example, I did something a couple of weeks ago where I was in a studio. There were about 30 people. Oh, we called it a studio. It was actually a little conference room, but we called it a studio. And there were about 30 people in the in the studio room with me. And then there were about a couple of hundred dialing in, zooming in, beaming in, watching it virtually. And there were three cameras in the room. One was fixed and two were moving. So most of my rehearsal was actually about knowing where the cameras were going to be at any one point and also making sure that the cameramen knew where the important points of my presentation were and so on. Now, that's sort of, you know, up at the high tech end of, of rehearsal. But even if you were in a room and you just had a laptop balanced on some books, you want to know the moments when it's important to be looking straight into the laptop so that you're communicating with that virtual audience at the other end of the lens. And then the moments when you can relax a bit and engage the people in the room a little bit more. You want to know when those moments are and you can't really make those up on the fly in real time. You really need to rehearse those in advance. If you are going to take my advice and, and do that, and I strongly recommend that you do, um, recording yourself is, is humbling, but also it's one of the best ways of, of, of learning. Record your rehearsal and watch it back, and you'll very, very quickly tutor yourself. Are you going too fast? Are you engaging audiences in the right way? Are you saying the right things? Are you looking into the camera at the right moments? Are you looking at your notes too much or not enough and so on? You'll pick up those things very, very quickly if you watch the rehearsal um, back to yourself. We're going to come to the, the third of the three P's, and, and then I want to stop and just check if any questions or comments have come in as I get to the third of the three P's, because we're going to spend the rest of the session looking at this third of the three P. And this one is uh, the pre presentation itself, of course. You have to present. So you've planned, you've done your preparation, you've rehearsed, you've got everything ready, and now you need to do it. You need to give the pitch, you need to give the presentation itself. And I want to spend the rest of the session looking at the real details of doing this in the virtual and the hybrid environment. But let me just stop just for a second and just see, Ben, whether any um, comments or questions or have come in yet or whether you've got any. Uh, yes, we have. So we've got one that's come in here from Ben Davenport that's a really interesting one. So I'll read it out for you, Lee, so you don't have to look at it. It says, you mentioned with hybrid, you can send the brochure in advance. What do you think about sharing slides with an audience in advance? Will that increase engagement? So they focus on what you're saying rather than what's on the slides or decrease engagement? Because they'll interpret the slides for themselves and disengage in the pitch. It's a it's a great question. Thank you. Uh, uh, was it Ben as well? Did you uh, say yes, ben? it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah ben so At the moment, Ben's in the forerunner for winning the book, right? Um, it's a great question. So there's a couple of ways of answering this. One is, and in fact, we're going to come on to the word engagement in in a second. Anything that you can do that is likely to increase an audience's engagement is worth thinking about and trying. And think about it on a very simple level. For a virtual audience, so people who are who are dialing in, 
the very act of having something sent to them is a little bit more exciting than a lot of the stuff they've been experiencing over the last year or so. Um, and I've done a couple of presentations where deliberately we've sent envelopes and it says, do not open this envelope until instructed to in Lee Warren's session, dot, dot, dot. And it's, you know, there's a little bit of intrigue, right? There's a little bit of excitement. Now that might be a little bit too, you know, too theatrical, too, too dramatic for some of you on the call. But I just want you to acknowledge that even just sending something makes the session a little bit more interesting. Now, coming on to the specific question about slides, and if you send, you know, if you share your slides in advance, does that decrease or increase the engagement? It can do both, right? It can do both of those things, and it can do them in the following ways. If your slides are basically the narration of your presentation, in other words, your slides are your own notes written on, most of what you're gonna say is written on, on, on pieces of PowerPoint and you send those to people, of course, that's going to reduce the engagement. People can read ahead of you. Most people will read quicker than you can speak. They'll be ahead of you. If your slides have got all the information the audience needs on them, then it will reduce the engagement. If, however, you do what great presenters do, which is use slides to support your message as you're giving it, rather than be the whole message themselves, then what can happen is, um, let me give you an example. I was going to do this a bit later, but let me just zip to this. So, for example, let's say if I was talking to you about, you know, there's a light at the end of a tunnel, um, I could do something like this. Here's my slide. I move myself to a different part of the screen. Now, if I'd sent you this slide in advance, you'd have no idea what this is going to be about. Or, you, you, I mean, you might be able to guess perhaps a tiny bit, but you probably wouldn't have much of an idea what that's about. So that might increase the engagement as we're going through. So in other words, I might be able to say to you, open the slide deck if you're dialing in virtually. You'll notice there's a picture of a train track. What's this all about? Well, this is about the light at the end of the tunnel. So that is more likely, I hope that doesn't sort of sound too, I made that up on the spur of the moment, I hope that doesn't sound sort of too camp and over the top, but um, you, you get the point, I hope. So that would increase or is likely to increase the engagement. You're leading the audience along, you're taking them on a little journey with you. Um, ben Davenport, I hope that answers your question enough. Are there any more, Ben, or can I carry on? I just had one very quick one for you. Sure. So you mentioned about how you, 30% um, of your time, you're sat in a room with people, sort of working them through how to do presentations. What sort of tips have you got? I mean, not everyone is a natural presenter or feels comfortable being up on stage. So what tips have you got for people to get over those nerves in presenting and getting their presentation to stand out? Um, that's a great question, which, and I'll answer it. And then it, I'll, probably what I'll be able to do for the rest of the session is say, I was going to answer that and I've already done it. Um, so the, the single big, you know, there's a moment when every public speaker always says, if there's only one thing you take away from this session, here it is. And that is rehearse. Right, the single best thing anyone can do to improve their presenting and pitching uh, ability is to rehearse. That's the single best thing. I'm assuming when I say that that you've got a good service, that you're you've got a good message. Rehearsal can't can't improve a terrible message. So I'm assuming you've you've got that right. Um, and I really do mean rehearse. Uh, I, I really do. You know, if you're going to stand up when you're doing your pitch or presentation, stand up when you rehearse. If, if you've got 21 minutes to deliver the pitch, rehearse in 21 minutes. I really do mean deliberately put the pressure onto yourself. I can tell you hand on heart, well over half the time when I work with people, people say to me, I'm better in the moment. And the strange thing is, the more senior someone is, the more likely they are to say this to me, right? I, I don't rehearse. I'm better in the moment. I can tell you, my friends, nobody is better in the moment. No, I, I'm really lucky. I've worked with some of the best performers in, in the country. I'm, I'm an ex-performer myself. I used to be a professional magician and mind reader. Um, I'm an amateur pianist. You know, it would be insane if, if you met a pianist who was going on at the proms and, and they said, um, do you know what? I haven't, I haven't rehearsed this, this piano concerto. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just better in the moment, right? <laughs> you, you, it would obviously be bonkers if, if um, uh, um, uh, her name's gone out of my head, Emma Raducanu, the, the tennis player. If she'd said, you know, I'm not going to practice my tennis. I'm just better in the moment. She's probably good in the moment, but not better, right? So rehearsal, that's the single biggest tip. Excellent. That's great. So we haven't got any other questions at the moment, but if anyone does have any questions they want to ask Lee, um, it could be about magic and mind reading, as he just mentioned there, um, then please do put them into the question section. But Lee, I'll let you, I'll let you carry on. Cool. So at, at some speed, I'm going to zip through really quickly, and I hope this is really useful for you all. Um, six, <laughs> I love my words that begin with the same letter. So these, these are six words that begin with the, the letter E, right? My, my six E's of online presenting. Um, and hybrid presenting. And, and I think these words, they really cover, if you just have these as a little checklist for yourself, they really cover everything you need to think about to be really 
good in a hybrid and an online online situation. Um, so the first one is the word environment. And environment obviously means where you are, the space that you're in. So Ben, for example, mentioned my, my backdrop, um, which is a bookcase. Now, this is not accidental. This is not casual. Uh, the reason is your backdrop really, particularly when you're, when even if you're in a hybrid situation, if you're presenting over um, a camera and some of your audience in a room together, if you've got the choice of an environment, really look at your environment and see, does this establish your credibility or back up your credibility? Does it reinforce your message or is it neutral or is it contradicting or reducing your credibility in any way? So for example, I've got a bookcase because my my, my my what I sell is content. It's knowledge. So there's a bookcase. You'll notice if you look very carefully, it's slightly blurred. I've set the camera so that you can't um, uh, you won't get distracted too much by the individual books, ideally. But that's there because it sort of backs up um, what I do. I sell knowledge. But you'll also notice I've got a white wall here, which is a little bit uh, boring just on its own. So I've put a, a light on the floor. I just shined a light just to break that up very slightly. And you'll also notice I'm using graphics, which come in and out and move around a bit. All of these are just to establish this is a professional presentation. This is something worth watching. This is something worth listening to. It's the digital equivalent of what we used to do in the real world, which is polishing your shoes and, and checking your outfit in a mirror before you walk into a room. And we sort of need to be able to do this um, uh, for ourselves in a virtual environment. When you're in a hybrid environment, so when you're in a space where perhaps other people have control of some of the surroundings, then really get to know your environment. Know where you're sitting, know where you can move. Um, and if you've got cameras, know where the cameras are. And if, you know, if you're in a room and there are two people operating a camera, and this is going to happen more and more to us over the next couple of years, I think, um, ask the cameramen for their advice. Where should I stand? Where should I sit? Where should I look? Right? Get used to the environment. It will boost your confidence and you'll look so much more credible. You'll come across in a much more credible way. If you're in a very low tech hybrid situation, you know, the laptop balanced on some books, broadcasting out to other people, just do a double check before you do your presentation or your pitch. Just make sure. Is the laptop in the right place? Is the is it um, at the right height to make you look good? Is there anything distracting behind you? Is it easy to knock it over and create a disaster and so on? So try and be in, as in control of your environment as possible and make your environment work for you. Um, I've already shown you this this slide, but this is another example of creating your own environment. That slide that I showed you earlier, this is just a slightly more interesting way of using slides. I've just um, uh, used a tiny, I'm very a bit technophobic, but even I can move my, my camera around. It took me about 10 minutes to learn to do this. Makes for a nicer environment for people dialing in. The second word is one that um, Ben Davenport asked about in his question, which is about engagement. And this is really important and engagement is slightly different depending on whether you're just in a real room with people, whether you're hybrid or whether you're entirely virtual. When you're entirely virtual, obviously your engagement options are a little bit limited, but I think you do have to try and get some engagement wherever you can. So my form of doing that today is two things. One is asking people for questions. Are there any questions? Are there any comments? And you'll notice I mentioned my book at the beginning and said I'd send it to someone. It's a bit tongue in cheek, but also it might encourage a little bit of engagement with you all. Um, I'm also using graphics, things that move in and out and moving at some speed. I'm not staying on one topic for too long. All of these things are likely to help uh, engagement. If I was doing a longer uh, presentation or pitch, there are other things you can do. You can give things to people. You can send things to people in advance. You can use polls. Most um, platforms, most online tech has polls and so on. Where you're in a hybrid environment, you want to be very, very careful that with the engagement. You're not engaging one audience to the detriment of another. And ideally, good hybrid presenters are learning now. And everyone's new to this, remember, right? The good news is everyone's learning how to do this. Um, uh, good hybrid presenters are very good at balancing, engaging those two audiences. And there are a few ways of doing this in the hybrid environment, which is possibly the most difficult. So one is right near the front of your presentation or your pitch, acknowledge the audience who are dialing in, acknowledge them. So you say good morning to everybody in the room, and then you say a special good morning to all those of you who are dialing in today. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing your questions and comments as well. Let them know that they're welcome. If it's a very small group of people dialing in, you can even learn their names. So if it's three, five, seven, possibly even 10 people, you can get to know their names and use their names throughout your pitch or presentation. If it's a larger number and you, you, it wouldn't be right to learn their names, you could perhaps know the name of their department, their vertical, their industry, their business or whatever. You know, So you might pepper your pitch or presentation with phrases like, we haven't heard from marketing for a while. Anybody in marketing who's dialing in want to comment? Right, you might say something like that just to make sure they're engaged, just to make sure they're included. I'm just going to check my time. Good. Um, 
where you're doing anything physical with the real audience, so for example, if you're giving the, 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 the audience in the room with you a brochure or something like that, try if possible to have mailed that to people in advance or at least have an easy digital download for the audience who are dialing in. That helps as well, just to make sure they don't feel left out. And the other thing is I would avoid um, referring to people working from home. Um, I, this is just an instinctive thing. It's not science. It's just an instinct of mine. But generally, it seems people prefer being referred to as dialing in, attending via Zoom, the virtual audience, rather than working from home. It can accidentally sound like we've got real people working here in the room, and then we've got all of you pretending to work from home. So just be a little bit cognizant about your language in terms of how you engage people. Um, that's the second of our three uh, of our six E's. Um, the next one is the experience. And the reason I use the word experience is because all of your audiences will be having an experience of your presentation or your pitch. And it's really useful for you to make sure that that experience is at the front of your mind. What great, what bad presenters do is they think, what do I want to say and what's the best way to say it? And what great presenters do is they say, what does the audience need to get and how can I give it to them, right? What do the audience need to get? So in other words, in order for me to achieve my goal, what does the audience need to hear? What do they need to see, all right? They're, they're really focused on the audience. And your audience will be having an experience. And so what I'm doing today, for example, is you're attending virtually. I'm broadcasting you virtually. So the experience is much more like a TV show rather than being in a room with someone talking over PowerPoint. And I've deliberately gone for that experience. So I've used graphics that move in and out. I'm using a camera that's framed in a very particular way. I've got some studio lights on and, and so on. So I've done this deliberately as a mini sort of quick TV show because that's a more engaging experience, I think, rather than just using some PowerPoint slides. With your hybrid audience, it's really important to understand those two audiences will be getting a different kind of experience. And when you're doing your planning to try and make sure that you know how you're going to make the experience work well for both of them. And I've given you some ideas about that already in the engagement. So really think about what is the experience they're getting? Is that as good as it can be? Is there anything else I can do to make it better? And again, I'm really happy to take any questions about the specifics of that. Um, nearly there. Uh, the fourth one is eyes. Eyes are really important. When you're presenting virtually, when the audience is just virtual like we are today, you have to look into the lens. And I cannot believe how many people still go, don't get this message. So, so many people are presenting like this all the time. Here's me looking at myself, staring at myself. Um, and this looks great to me, but probably looks to you, all of you, like I'm ignoring you. If I look into the lens, into the camera lens, this is a bit strange for me, feels a bit weird for me. But for all of you watching, I'm assuming this is... Um, a, a, a more engaging experience. This feels like I'm talking directly to you. The same thing applies with the hybrid audience, but of course you've got the two challenges. You've got an audience in the room with you often, and then you've got this other audience who are, who are dialing in via, and, and you're speaking to them via a camera. So you have to know where that lens is and you have to occasionally come back to it. And a really skilled hybrid presenter is very good at this. So if we imagine there was somebody in the room there was an audience in the room. I'm talking to the audience in the room. And then if I were a hybrid presenter, I would say, now, for all those of you dialing in, let's just check. Have you got any questions? And so I'll bring my eyes back to the lens when I'm talking to the audience who are watching me through the lens. It's a very lovely way of keeping people uh, involved and engaged and, and, and so on. Uh, our penultimate one is energy. Um, and <laughs> this is such a key word. And it sort of comes back to, to, to something around nerves and, and, and so on, I think. But you do need a certain amount of energy to transmit a, a message in different environments. In the virtual environment like this, it, it's not enough just to, just to sit back in your chair and mumble through some slides. It, it, it just doesn't work online. Like I mentioned right at the beginning, you get less, the, the online environment's less forgiving. And so this is true also for the hybrid kind of environments that many of us will be in. You've got to get your energy down the camera lens somehow. Now, when you're standing up, that's much easier to do. And again, a bit of rehearsal will help you to do that. Rehearse and watch yourself back. When you're sitting down, like I am today, a great thing to do, and I know this sounds bonkers, but if you're watching this live, do this with me. It's, it's, it's really easy. Just sit really near the front of your chair, not at the back. Um, and if you sit right near the front of your chair, what happens is your torso more naturally becomes more upright. Your voice becomes a bit more resonant and you are uh, more prepared. You're more energetic. And then if you put both feet flat on the floor and move one foot so it's slightly closer to the camera lens, what happens is as you're talking, your body naturally starts leaning towards the lens and it just gives you a bit of 
energy, gives you a bit of presenting energy. I really believe this message. I really want you to believe this message too. It's not fake. It's completely authentic. It's just something that happens in your body when you do this. So if you're speaking into a camera lens uh, virtually, try that. It really, really helps to get your message across. Obviously, you're not going to do this all the way through an entire meeting. But when you're pitching, when you're presenting, when you're getting important messages across to somebody, you really want the right amount of energy. And the very last one is uh, this wonderful word, empathy. Um, it's such an important thing. And I suppose this goes back to experience that I mentioned earlier. But we really want to be empathetic to the experience that other people are having online. Attention spans, like I mentioned at the beginning, it's very tough. O online environment can be very draining for many people. And again, in the hybrid environment, those people who are dialing in, strangely, even though they're not in the room, it will often be more tiring for them to focus than the people who are in the room with you. So be empathetic to that. And wherever you can, keep your messages as short as possible. Make your points as, as pithy and succinct as possible. Um, and it's quite a skill to be able to do this. But but I've tried to do this deliberately a few times during our session. So I've used little phrases that will resonate with you, I hope. So earlier on, I said, everybody online has the attention span of a three-year-old and the memory of a 90-year-old. Now, that's just one way of saying we don't have much attention online. But it's deliberately sort of summed up in a tweetable fashion um, to help you remember it better, to help you engage with it better. Um, then uh, a bit later, I said, you only have two choices. You either rehearse in advance or you rehearse in front of your audience. And again, that's deliberately phrased as, as a pithy summing up of, of main ideas. Um, so try and do that whenever you can. And the uh, very last thought in terms of empathy is, and I'm no, I'm no scientist, right? I'm not a scientist at all. But as far as I understand it, neuroscientists are all very excited about mirror neurons in our brains. And those are the things that basically, when we see somebody else get hurt, we, we wince in sympathy. We have a sympathetic experience with other people. And you can really use this on, online and, and in hybrid environments because people will react to your energy levels. They'll react empathetically to how much you believe your own message and how um, committed you are to getting your message across. And it's a bit counterintuitive, but this format, speaking directly into a lens and into a microphone, for many people watching, is actually more intimate than being face to face in a real room, because we often feel like we're having a one to one conversation with the presenter, even when they're presenting to um, tens of thousands of people like I am today or 15 anyway. Um, right. So, so it can often feel like a more intimate environment. All right, my friends. So I've, I've set out my my stool there. Those are the main ideas I wanted to get across to you very quickly today. Let me just come back to Ben and just see if any questions or comments have come in now. Yeah, there is, Lisa. There's a really interesting question from Jessica Lang that I think <clears throat> I think a lot of us have probably been thinking whilst you've been presenting. It's what software or program have you used to get these graphics as overlays into your presentation? Because a lot of us do these presentations and when you enter a platform like this or Zoom, you can't always put these graphics on. So what have you used to do that? if you can divulge your secrets it's magic <laughs> right um, i will listen what i'll do is i'll put um any of you who've got any sort of detailed and, and individual questions and so on you can always connect with me on on linkedin afterwards it's very easy to find me on, on linkedin um the piece of software i use is called ecamm live which is for mac users only um, and then there's another version which is free which is called obs where the learning curve is a little steeper Everything I've covered today, including all of the technology I've used, um, including the, the graphics, my microphone and everything, I've, I've got it in a handout. Um, so what I can do, in fact, I forgot to ask you this, Ben, I guess there'll be an easy way to send this to everybody, won't there, somehow, magically. Yes, yes um, of course. Yeah. If you just send it over to us and we'll be able to make sure that it gets out to people, because I know a lot of people will be interested in yeah. the technology. So, so rather than spend any detailed time on that now, I'll, I'll send you that because it's all there in the handout. Just while I remember, actually, one thing I forgot to mention to you all is in terms of the environment, and I know this sounds like a really basic thing, but when you're, but particularly when you're in control of your own environment, that the lighting is really crucial. The lighting can make or break a good pitch or presentation for many of you. And the rough rule is get the light behind the camera lens shining on your face. Let me show you what happens if I turn my um, lights off here. My, my camera instantly starts to struggle. You know, you can you can see me. It's all right, but it's not. Look, I come back into my natural animal magnetism and and, and so on right here. <laughs> it's just not it's not not as nice without a, a light. So just set yourself up and get get some lights or a light behind the lens and make sure you look as good as you you can because it's quite easy to get that right and very easy to get it wrong. Excellent. Well, we're heading up to the to the end of time now, Lee. So I just want to um, Ben Davenport has made another um, not a question, another statement here saying um, relating to OBS. OBS also has NDI integration now for those with access to other NDI kit. This can be great for hybrid presentations. So 
useful tip there from Ben. So thank you for that. So I want to thank you, Lee. It's been a really great presentation. I know you've uh, sped through all of that stuff, but um, we will send out that further information you mentioned. And it's definitely worth connecting with Lee on LinkedIn. So Lee, thank you for joining us. Ben, Everyone... can I ask one more thing? Of course you can. Um, ben Davenport, can you send me your details via LinkedIn and I'll, I'll send you a book? Excellent. Ben, I hope you heard that. So send Lee your details and he'll fire you over a copy of his book. So thank you everyone for joining us. There's another session starting, which is really interesting around communities and how you can use communities to engage your audiences. So if you head to the live session area, you'll be able to join that session. So Lee, once again, thank you very much for joining us today.